Welcome to Chaotic Harmony. My name is John. This is Crystal. We talk about the joys and the challenges of teaching music in the elementary school classroom. We share struggles, we brainstorm solutions. And we would love to have you join Welcome us. Welcome to another episode of Chaotic Harmony. Today, you might, if you're watching the video, which I know only 12 people do, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> Hi, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sandra. Hey, Jamie. So the thing is, we're in a different area. Also, I, even if you're not watching the video, you could probably hear something different, just we're using different equipment. But also, we have a wonderful new guest. This is Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi. Awesome. <laughs> We're uh, in her office. I know. Yeah. That's why all the, the I know. Lights. There's twinkle lights. Know. It's, it's amazing. A- so, Crystal, you yeah. first met Michelle. Mm-hmm. You want to share that? Okay, portion? yeah, I'll tell that little story, and then we'll have you introduce mm-hmm. yourself. Well, first of all, how about you tell us who you are and where yeah. we are? We'll let you do that. Sure, sure. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, my name is Michelle Chan, and I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. Um, and I am based in Arcadia, California. So it's in the San Gabriel Valley. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we road tripped it. Yep. And we mm-hmm. are in Michelle's office. Yep. Um, and I met Michelle because I was getting ready to do our, um, um, I was doing a session with Teaching with Orf and we were doing social emotional learning based lessons. And, uh, and we had talked about how in that workshop, the most important thing to be talking about were um, burnout resistance mm-hmm. and boundaries for teachers. And then how do we teach um, the same things to kids? So how do we kind of work on those skills within ourselves mm-hmm. and then empower kids to do the same thing? So I was looking for books that had to do with like emotional boundaries, bullying, standing up, physical boundaries. And I found Michelle's book. Uh-huh. It's called My Invisible Bubble and it's beautiful. Yes, it is. And I've talked about it on the podcast before. We did the bubble song a couple episodes back um so that's how i found her and i sent her a thank you email and she wrote me the most wonderful reply (laughs) so now we're here yes thank you for inviting us thank you yeah or i might have invited myself but (laughs) (laughs) either way thank you for saying yes no no i mean i i think it was so lovely to get your message um to know that the book resonated with you know you and and some of the students that you worked with so yeah, yeah that was really nice it really did. And it's still making the rounds at school very much so. I yeah. eventually will be placing my library as well. I, I like your <laughs> idea, placing the library, have other people just like read it. It's a great book. Yeah. So, um, yep. so a lot of our listeners are music teachers. Mm-hmm. And you yourself are not a music teacher. No. <laughs> um, and so you shared a little bit about where we are. Um, but I'm curious just to see if there's some sort of parallel. Like, what, what, what was your elementary school growing up looking like? Um, let's see. Well, I was in um, East L.A. Okay. for my elementary school. Uh, we didn't really have a, a music program. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of our own teachers, like, just taught music okay, to us. Okay. okay. So um, I remember learning the recorder, like, in class. And Classic. then, yeah. <laughs> so, Gotta do it. <laughs> yep. It's required. Yeah. And then. Otherwise, I, how are you going to order hot cross buns? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. is true. That's, yeah, that's you play the the songs. Okay. There we go. Classic. I, <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but I think in fifth grade, I had a, a music teacher who like taught us like instruments. Okay. Okay. So like I learned the violin, but she didn't really teach us like how to read music notes. It. Okay. it was more like I, I think she just wrote down like one, two, three, uh-huh. you know, and then we just kind of learned to play pretty simple songs. Okay. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't get the luxury of having music teachers like you really. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's really normal for Southern California, mm. unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. Mm-hmm. At Chula Vista, we were gone. For, like there was 35 years of no music education. So like it's common. Oh. Yeah. I know growing up yes. for myself, I yeah. shared this in another episode, but like similar, like I had a music teacher that taught like it pulled us out, taught also recorders. So <laughs> totally understandable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same. When I was in San Diego, we didn't have a music program either. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. It's not common. So you yourself though, you're your licensed marriage family therapist, LMFT. Yeah. Um, so first off, what, what, what inspired you to go that direction? I of think, all directions you could have gone. Yeah. <laughs> I think I really just loved like the idea of mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, I started in high school being part of like a peer listeners program. And so it was uh, headed by like two of our high school counselors. And so we learned like after school how to actively listen and be there to support our peers if they needed. And I think at that time I was like, 
this is awesome. I wish I could do this for a job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't something that I even knew about, uh-huh. right? Like I didn't know therapy was a thing, you know, that's yeah. not talked about in the Asian community, yes. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So a therapist is like something way left field. So, um, but I think uh, I was like looking, after I was done with my undergrad, I was like, I know I wanna go into the mental health field, but what, right? Like school yeah. psychologist, maybe a high school counselor, you know? So I was reading through like the description of what an MFT is. And it just really resonated with me because I mm-hmm. think the focus of being a MFT is to focus on relationships mm-hmm. rather than putting blame on like, oh, something's wrong with you specifically, right? Like let's work on the relationship, right? Between you and your parents, you and your spouse or, you know, anything like that. So I really like that the focus um, was on the relationship and not kind of stigmatizing someone, you know, or putting blame on someone. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it, MFTs kind of see things in a systemic view okay. uh, versus like, you know, being in a vacuum. So, gotcha. you know, kind of like um, thinking about, you know, um, things outside, right? Like in your environment, in school, at home, how does that impact, for example, a child? So do you focus with your clients on how do you um, like survive within the system? Is that what you teach? We do, Uh but it kind of depends on what it is or we kind of role play and think of other ways to respond that might be more helpful (laughs) Um, in in certain environments. And sometimes it's just hearing them and and validating their experiences. Okay. if that makes sense. It does. Yes. It does. I'm trying to understand um, like what. So if you were to seek out uh, an MFT, right, mm-hmm. for a counselor. Mm-hmm. Um, so would you get somebody who is more like a talk therapist or somebody who would give you homework or what kind of skill? What? How would yeah. that look? You know? <laughs> yeah. For me. Sure. Um, yeah. Well, actually, yeah. It, it depends on each on individual. It sure. Like some clients really want assignments yeah you know um i'm not really a therapist that does that too much but sometimes i do because Mm -hmm. i was like you really need to focus on this you know (laughs) during the week i need my a's (laughs) yeah (laughs) so um but it, it just really depends on each person and there's so many wonderful models of therapy now yeah that it's not just talk therapy although that can be very healing in itself you know Mm -hmm. to have someone listen to you sure um but there's so many other models of therapy. I know there's like drama therapists, mm-hmm. there's like somatic work, so they focus on the body, and there's a lot of, um, you know, trauma-informed yeah. kind of models. Yeah. 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 All right. You mentioned the whole stigmatization, especially in the Asian community, which I get uh, regarding uh, um, therapy. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you uh, have any obstacles when you were going to be a therapist in that realm? or? Oh, yeah. (laughs) When I, uh, so my major in college was psychology. My, Mm -hmm. my whole family, extended family included, were like, psychology, what are you, what are you going to do with that? (laughs) (laughs) What is this? Right? Like, it Mm -hmm. makes no sense. And, you know, um, what are you even going to do with this? And then when I started looking into MFT programs. Um, after I graduated, I took a, a, a year off to kind of figure out what I wanted. Um, at that time, when I decided to be an MFT, my family was like, oh my gosh, you're gonna become crazy. Like, <laughs> crazy, okay. Yeah, wow. yeah. Or, or they're like, oh, only the crazy, like, will become therapists. Mm. And I was like, huh, huh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, Thanks, guys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Except now that I'm like way done and, and licensed, um, they will send friends to call me That's to good. be like, hey, I have so and so who needs support. And then, you know, because they're friends and family, I, I can't see them. So mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, this is what you should look for. Right, and right. I was like, oh, my degree came in handy after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh. Making change from within. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm glad you can bring that to that community. Because, like, yeah, uh, my being, you know, Philippine American, like, that's definitely something that was not talked about. And it's, mm-hmm. I, it's only until like my late twenties I really started considering maybe this is something I should actually lean into. Maybe I should look into a therapist, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's um, awesome. 
So Crystal mentioned about the book. Mm-hmm. It was called My, it's Invisible. Called My Invisible Bubble. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, first off, what, I, I know you. So you have a blog, and yeah. <laughs> um, you wrote in your blog what was the inspiration. But to our listeners, like, what was the inspiration to write this book? I think at that time I was seeing a lot of um, clients who were younger. Mm-hmm. So I was a school-based therapist before. So I went okay. into like elementary schools, middle schools, and high schools. And mm-hmm. I realized that there were a lot of children that were maybe being hurt in different ways, you know, mm-hmm. physically or mm-hmm. emotionally. Um, and they didn't know anything about boundaries, mm-hmm. right? They just assume, like an adult tells me, so I got to do it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Right. And then I realized that even teens kind of had that, like, oh, yeah. I'm just expected to follow, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and some of them kind of like act out instead, you know, because they're like, I don't know how to describe this or, or work through this. So I think that's why I kind of came up with, um, you know, the idea of a bubble um, to kind of help them feel like a sense of security, and support like they have their internal system right that yeah. they can focus on and, and depend on so um yeah and i think that you know kind of made me um like when i actually used this with my goddaughter who was really young at the time i was like okay i don't want her to be without this lesson yeah, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. so then you know when i was talking to her about it i was like oh you know there's this bubble and you know i didn't want to scare her <laughs> sure yeah um and so i think she she caught on and i was like oh this is a apparently a great analogy that kids will get yeah Sean, too. Yeah. yeah absolutely mm-hmm. it's re- it's really powerful um so I think the page that resonates a lot the most is when I get to, let me see, I want to make sure I see it right. She's at a party. Mm -hmm. Uh, When I go to parties with daddy and get picked up by aunties and uncles, I don't know. My invisible bubble swells and my body feels tense. And I say, put me down and let me go. Because she's all dressed up all cute and in (laughs) pink. And that, I mean, it's every grade level I've read this to they lean in and they're like oh and so i say so if you if you have a lot of aunties and uncles around your house or if you're at a party and somebody wants to give you a hug can you say no and they hesitate Mm -hmm. and they say no (laughs) (laughs) and i say of course you can say no if your body is telling you no you get to say no thank you because you have her say there um, you know, I say, no, thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Put me down. Let me go. And we practice saying that. And it's really empowering. It's like it's the light goes on. Mm-hmm. You can see it because they don't understand. Like your body is yours. Yes. You get to say what happens to your body. Yeah. Yeah. And until we get we get everyone to understand that from the time they're small, not only will they know how to keep their own bodies safe, they won't know that they need to protect others as well. Yeah. So it's an important lesson. Yeah. And I, yeah. I kind of hope that this book, while maybe parents are reading to younger ones that mm-hmm. they would also be like, oh, yeah. I shouldn't say yeah. you need to you yeah. know, hug so-and-so. Yeah. Or, yeah, That's the hard part, I think, <laughs> is, you know, grownups get offended. We mm-hmm. always told our boys, you don't have to hug any, you know, you don't have to hug grandma and grandpa if you don't yeah. feel comfortable doing it, mm-hmm. but they get offended, you know? Right. Yeah. Because yeah. then you're just like, it, it, where's the line between that and like, you know, the, the notion of defiance? And so like, yeah, that's what I feel like a lot of parents struggle with, with mm-hmm. the whole hugsies. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But you don't owe physical affection to anyone. You don't. Yeah. It's true. I mean, yeah. we have we have Michelle here too. Can, can so <laughs> we're in the, good, we're in the green yeah. here. Yeah, green light. Um, so how do you how do you go about t- when you work? You, so you work with children, correct? Mm-hmm. You uh, work school. with all grades. Yeah. With, do you still work with students and uh, children in, in schools, or is it mainly in your practice? Or mainly in my private practice. Okay. Um, I do see right now. I'm seeing more like older children okay. and teens. Okay. Um, you know, instead, because my practice has gone into telehealth. <laughs> mm. And so um, seeing little ones, it, it's harder. Going you know? on Zoom. and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. They need that, you know, one on one, like in person kind of engagement mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I don't really see young children at this time. OK. Yeah. Well, let's just say you did. <laughs> this is yeah. hypothetical because because we yeah. work with kindergartners to sixth graders, and I oh, think okay. a lot of our yeah. st- uh, our listeners do. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, except for Mark, he's an, admin- <laughs> he's an administrator. He works with adults. But like, how would you go about talking about boundaries 
at an mm-hmm. approachable level for, say, like a five-year-old, for a kindergartner? How mm-hmm. would you go about that? I know you kind of delineate yeah. in your book as in, in a narrative form, but like, mm-hmm. and on one and one in, in your personal way. So I think usually what we talk about is noticing like your body mm-hmm. and how, where are you feeling things in your body, right? Mm-hmm. Like, is your stomach tense? Is your shoulder tense? Mm. Is your like jaw clenched or, you know, and, and it kind of depends on the person that they're with, mm-hmm. right? Because different mm-hmm. people can bring that out in, sure. in kids. So, and, and we're kind of focusing on like, how does it impact? them um instead of me kind of coming up with scenarios or things like that Mm -hmm. so instead you know i might ask about their experiences i think you know five-year-old is very vocal (laughs) Mm -hmm. and and so we'll let you know if you sit and ask and and, Mm -hmm. you know listen i think children really need that from adults um to be heard yeah so um i think that's one thing like i would ease into it by asking about their experiences and how it impacted them and and then we kind of um role play like Mm -hmm. oh what else can we say instead or next time you know can we try this or what will results will that bring or or okay how about we'll try this and you know so we kind of role play and and game plan together yeah 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 i think they need to be listened to and then taken seriously Mm -hmm. i think it's really easy to dismiss kids as an adult and kids are so earnest you know they they believe 100 percent absolutely every word that's coming out of their mouth and that earnestness can be seen as cute or funny because Mm. adults don't talk that way we're we're you know socialized (laughs) like wrap up our language to make it more palatable to other people so i yeah, I try really hard with my students to reflect back what they're saying exactly in their mm-hmm. words and like yeah. tamp down that desire to, oh, you know, <laughs> or giggle because, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's easy to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So I'm wondering, do you do you notice that in yourself when you're talking to kids sometimes? In how I talk to them? Sure. Yeah. 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 What's your therapist persona? Like, how do you kind of enter that? Because I think that's the most um, difficult thing as a first year teacher is to kind of find that 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 form of communication. And then as a music teacher, um, the other day I saw first grade Mm -hmm. and then I saw sixth grade, (laughs) (laughs) you know, and so immediately I had to change my communication style and I can do that now. But I'm wondering how, how do you find that for yourself? I think I. As therapists, we kind of do that yeah, as well. You do. So with children versus teens versus mm-hmm. young adults mm-hmm. or adults, right? We can't communicate all the same way. So with younger children, I tend to use like, um, I, I think I tend to use like easier words to mm-hmm. understand, okay. to, you know, help us connect. And I try to be like really excited, like, oh, mm-hmm. let's play, uh-huh. you know, like, what do you want to play today? Like when mm-hmm. they come in. Um and then kind of ease them in. So we do a lot of like play therapy, like we're we're playing and chatting or we're coloring and doing art stuff. So um, yeah, yeah. It's almost as if play is a great way of learning. Almost <sighs> is, huh? Yes, <laughs> yes. That is how children process things. They don't process by just sitting down at a desk and writing things down. Taking a test, Wait, filling what? in bubbles. <laughs> bubbles. Bubbles, I know. <laughs> wrong kind of bubble. Yeah, wrong kind. <laughs> oh, so this, this, this kind of this, bubble wait, wait. doesn't require number two pencil. <laughs> wait, oh, this book is not about the scantrons. No, no, okay. <laughs> no it's not. My, my apologies. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. If you like, when discussing about bubbles, have you ever like encountered like a certain like obstacle or hurdle that kids have with comprehension, or is it pretty you know self-explanatory to them? I think. Bubbles is is a really like tangible thing that mm-hmm. they can like really grasp. Mm-hmm. You know, they've all blown bubbles or seen bubbles being blown before, mm-hmm. and so they're like, "Oh, okay." You know, bubbles. so yeah. <laughs> I get so it. you know, um, and, and that's one of the things is I wanted to kind of make it like a light something tangible instead of like oh you know we have boundaries and they're like i don't know what that means <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> right? yeah so um boundaries is a big word yeah it's a big word yeah so i think that a lot of <laughs> yeah i think a I lot of kids do <laughs> catch on so uh that's so back to the blog uh-huh as you said you're out of the blog but it's it has a lot of great stuff it really does like but something i noticed as i was reading it mm-hmm. um you talk a lot about race yeah and um you talk a lot not just like 
in brief mention, but you t- go pretty much in depth. Not, um, and I guess for me, um, maybe just I, I need to ask this as a, ask this to the to the therapist in the room. Why is race important? It might be easy for me to understand, but why is race important? Oh man, I I can probably talk about that like all day. Um, but I guess to summarize, I mean, it's something that impacts all of us, mm-hmm. you know, whether we realize it or not, and whether it impacts us positively or negatively. Um, it's something in our society and in our, our environment. Mm-hmm. And so, as I mentioned earlier, as an MFT, I really see things truly through a systemic view, right? Um if I see a child who who feels like that's something that's really hindering them and that's why they're acting out, well then, I mean, yeah. you know, how yeah. can you ignore race, Certainly. right? And as a sure. as a BIPOC therapist, uh, which stands for Black Indigenous People of Color, mm-hmm. um, so as a BIPOC therapist, I, I think it's not something I can escape from. <laughs> so yeah. it's also own, my own lived experiences. And I want to make sure that clients who are looking for a BIPOC therapist to reflect, you know, their experiences, get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think that's that's definitely one reason <laughs> to talk about race. And, and of course, the past few years, a lot of thing has been going on. Yeah, like what? <laughs> oh, uh, let's, let's so many! Yeah, whole list here. Yeah. So you're saying it's part. It's partly it's your lived experience, but you just find that it affects everyone, mm-hmm. like whether or not we see it. So the yes. whole notion of it's like that we can be good by being colorblind is. It yeah, doesn't no. no, it doesn't work. It doesn't quite strip. Mm-hmm. No, nope. but no. again, I, I know that you've kind of moved on from this age demographic. I don't want to say moved on, but like you're focusing more on older individuals, but. Humor me. <laughs> I, so talking about race with a child, like yeah. how, how do you do that? Like, because again, we just mentioned that the past couple of years have been very, it's, you can't, you cannot ignore it. Yeah. Right. How do you bring it up? Similar to the whole bubble situation, like how do you bring it up to a child, yeah. the topics of race? I think that it really depends on each client. It's not something I bring up just you know, randomly with every client. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. it, if it's something that I'm hearing them kind of allude to or, mm-hmm. you know, share, um, then that's something we'll kind of explore from their personal experiences. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a lot of children who are BIPOC, right, they've probably witnessed or experienced some sort of racism in, in their short lives already. And so I think that you're just kind of naming the elephant in the room you know by naming it as you know it's not something that you did or Mm -hmm. it's not something personal it's the other person or it's you know some people unfortunately will judge you based on your race or your ethnicity or whatever you know thing that makes you special um Mm -hmm. and so i i think i kind of come had it with their own experiences so mm. because as a therapist i have the luxury of doing one-on-one, one-on-one yeah. <laughs> yeah quite different so, for us but yeah. It's, yeah okay yeah but i think you know i i was thinking about this from just the from the perspective of physical boundaries and um and thinking about how you can't escape the fact that we live our lives in bodies and it's kind of seen as rude to talk about that, you know, mm. like from lots of different perspectives. Yeah. And so people are deeply uncomfortable with talking about those boundaries starting from the physical. But mm. you have to normalize it with kids because when their body tells them that they're going through something that makes them feel unsafe and they don't have the language, you know, to really name it. Like, why are my shoulders tensing? And why does my tummy feel bad when this happens to me? Mm. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I was just making that connection in my head as I was listening. Yeah. Yeah. I guess then, yeah, it goes back down, back to what you were saying earlier about like making sure that the child understands the feelings that they're feeling in their body being self-aware about, Oh, my yeah my stomach is tensing oh mm-hmm. and then from there on we can actually just address what's causing it so i'm, I'm sorry my, my gears yeah. are moving as we're speaking this. yeah it's oh. a different lens than we normally uh-huh. look through but i think it's a really important one yeah because I, I remember i was watching um Saeb's, it was observing uh lee and jasandra um former podcast 
episode. Yeah. Um, and they work with a PE teacher. And something that I watched the PE teacher notice that when they were running, they stopped. And then they said, all right, everyone, place your hands on your hearts. Do you feel a beating? Like, oh, I never mm-hmm. thought of the self-awareness of body. It, I, why, I don't know why <laughs> I don't think of it about it. I don't know why we don't think about teaching about our actual bodies and how they're responding to yeah. it. I, I, yeah. I don't think it's something that is in the traditional like educational system, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. same as you know, like boundaries or feelings, right? We mm-hmm. learn vocabularies, you know, from elementary to high school, yeah. right? And none of it has ever been about feelings. Going from doing a hard right turn, not left turn. That's something else not entirely. Yet. Not yet. Uh, so, as I don't know why people would think this, but there's been a lot of trauma going on. Mm-hmm. Have you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure that you, yeah. you and your clients have known, uh, has reflected this. Yeah. Um, so I guess I ask, what have you noticed amidst the pandemic? Like, what kind of trends have you noticed with your clients? Like, yeah. um, are there any overarching trends that you've noticed as a themes, therapist? Themes, themes that have emerged. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think for sure trauma has been one, Mm -hmm. you know, whether it's because they're scared for their physical well-being or their family members well-being, right, because of COVID, Mm -hmm. or uh, maybe they are in a home environment that isn't the most supportive, Mm -hmm. whereas Mm -hmm. school was a safe place before, they didn't have that during the pandemic. And so... Got taken away. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that definitely affects a lot of like children and teens, um, along with, you know, I, I think they have a harder time connecting. Like they're like, I don't know how to make friends. I don't mm. know how to mm-hmm. connect. I don't, you know, mm-hmm. and, and because they're used to staring at a screen and, and be like, OK, bye. You know, like yeah. they didn't have recess. They didn't have all these things that yeah. normally mm-hmm. they would develop their social skills. So I think a lot of, and, and not just children, but I think a lot of adults are, you know, kind of like they got used to this new normal. Right. They're like, oh, I'm just home right. all the right. time. Yeah, <laughs> that's normal. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and I think it's a, a hard balance to be like, OK, I need to go out meet other people have social interaction (laughs) and also balancing like do i feel safe or is my anxiety going to skyrocket Mm -hmm. in the setting yeah yeah that's true yeah Yeah, getting back together um is exhausting it's like physically (laughs) exhausting yeah yeah and it has been for them too i've noticed i noticed that uh, when we first came back to school at the beginning of the year the kids were just they didn't have the stamina to get through a school day. Yeah. Mm. I think it probably took about three months okay. for a lot of them to even just make it to the end of the day. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I think about what you said about the whole new normal element. Um, like, yeah, I, I, I feel like people say it, student, like, kids are resilient, and they are. Mm-hmm. That's true. But for parents to just expect them to just bounce like they have had bounced or not bounced really if you think about how they dealt with it <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> yeah yeah um is kind of unfair to them so yeah huh yeah mm-hmm. yeah and, and they're not just miniature adults they are children, they're children. <laughs> yeah yes. they you know their brains haven't fully formed and and they need help you know labeling things and processing things and mm-hmm. like being able to let it go and um yeah I think that that's a hard thing for mm. for a lot of children. Yeah. Um, cool. So the thing is, we've also decided to uh, do something a little different. We've decided to um, ask some people on Instagram. Yes. Oh, okay. What some, we should ask you. What we should ask you. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and so uh, oh, we got okay. a couple. We decided just to choose like a, just two, though, just for sake of so time. So we, uh, we said if you could ask a child therapist a question, mm-hmm. any question, what would it be? And so one person asked, uh, why do children make random noises? <laughs> <laughs> do you have an answer for this? I mean, I can make some guesses. Okay. okay. I, okay. I, I okay. don't know for sure, but I can make some guesses. And sometimes I, I'm thinking it might be out of boredom. Okay. And like yeah. just for entertainment. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just <laughs> bored and they're like coming to themselves or mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes children make noises because they're maybe self-soothing. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Like kind of like... Maybe it's a song or, or a rhythm that, you know, helps them self-soothe. Um, yeah, I, I think that's kind of my my 
best guesses, you know, or maybe they're just kind of thinking back on an experience they had, right? Or like a sound they heard and they're like, oh, let me try that out myself, right? And, and that's- <laughs> I it, remember that back when I was a kid, yes. <laughs> That's a so, cool sound, let's see if we can recreate it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, you know, I, I think it's like, you know, that curiosity, yeah. uh-huh. right? So, yeah, yeah, well, and, and go, that's Mr. how B. they process. There you go. <laughs> there you go, Mr. B. Um, <laughs> To Miss S, she asked, um, how do we connect with or build trust with students who've been emotionally abused and don't trust adults? Mm -hmm. So we go from like the really hard question to the easy question. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad we're we're easing it in that way. (laughs) Um, I think that with children who have been emotionally hurt and abused, um, there just needs to be a lot of patience and consistency. Um, and I think the children who have been through the most sometimes will act out the Mm -hmm. most in school Mm -hmm. just because maybe home is in a safe place. So they hold it all in Mm. and then school is a safe place. So they let it all out. (laughs) Right. right. And that, so, um, so I think sometimes it's just being patient and being consistent. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think children who have been abused and in any way are um, most likely hypervigilant mm-hmm. and hypersensitive to any facial reactions or mm-hmm. any movement of an adult's body, right? Okay. Um, it can be perceived as threatening if you, you know, get too close, right? Like, oh, you know, what's going to happen here? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think if they were to see that even when they act out, that they can be, you know, responded to in a calm but maybe firm Mm -hmm. way Mm -hmm. um that you know i think that that sets a structure that helps them feel like oh okay you know like there's a structure that i have to behave within but i have some flexibility Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. um yeah so don't shake him (laughs) probably probably not recommend no jonathan you need to do your work (laughs) (laughs) control your own impulses (laughs) Yeah, I, I think I, I mean I think you're definitely right. It's uh-huh. trying to process that with 31 kids. Yeah, yeah. But it's still needed. That's 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 the answer. Now, how do you do it? That's up be to a you. safe, yeah. predictable grown up mm-hmm. with a safe, predictable space where right. they get to come in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. hard. You know, if you have 31 hard. children and yeah. two are acting out, it, it's hard not to. Only two. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I was like, where do I get to? Oh, <laughs> so <kind. laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> I think with that, um, you know, I know a lot of parents mm-hmm. used to mm-hmm. do like a time out, but there's a new thing. You know, not too new. It's it's been around for a little while, mm-hmm. which is like a time in. So instead of like the child feeling cast away, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you're misbehaving, go sit in a corner, right? Mm-hmm. It's, I, it seems like you're having a hard time today. How about you sit right next to me? Mm-hmm. So we can, you know, be buddies. So um, I think that establishes like, I'm gonna be here for you during these difficult emotions and you're having difficulty. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, your calm presence can kind of ease a child sometimes mm. yeah. um that well, sympathetic nervous yeah. system response yeah yeah yeah, yeah. whereas if yeah. you're like oh you're misbehaving go to the principal's office or get out of here right right I mean, that's not going to develop any <laughs> connections no it's not <laughs> no sometimes you have to do it yeah. for your own yeah yeah, yeah. sanity right yeah. i think yeah. about one of the hardest students i've ever had he was a sixth grader when i first started um and he came into our school later into so he wasn't with us the whole time but the last school he was at he was he was the quote unquote expectation that he would quote unquote just always misbehave so he Mm. always was sent to the corner Mm. when he entered the door and so it's no wonder when he came to our school like it was just so difficult so yeah time yeah yeah. i like the time in element i've I've noticed some like of our sdc's uh, teachers would also do something similar to that so okay yeah Yeah. that's awesome i have a little boy that i try to do that with and it works sometimes um, cause he, he won't be part of the group unless I hold his hand okay. or, um, or say, w- will you come sit next to me and do this with me? Or uh, hold one of my little stuffies or something and sit next to me. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a good, it's a good strategy. And sometimes they just need to do their thing, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. hard to implement. It's easier uh-huh. said than done. Yeah. Like a lot it of is. things. <laughs> it is. But so, with consistency. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, and proving that you can keep your voice calm and your body calm and be a safe grown up <laughs> yeah. who provides a safe, stable space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Adults need coping skills too. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Therapy is cool. Yes. <laughs> cool. Uh huh. So there you go, Miss S. There you go. <laughs> cool. Well, um, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Michelle, thank you for being so part much. of this. Yeah. Um, but we're not done yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because we hear, oh, we, um, we're going to be doing a spiccato right after this break. So. All right. I want to take a quick break and thank my husband, Brian, who's been working behind the scenes producing these episodes every week on all of the platforms and on time. But you need to know that he is first a financial planner for Mission Trails Financial. Mission Trails Financial is a partner that seeks to guide clients in the journey to financial success. They believe that people need a financial advisor that aims to provide strategies for success. Mission Trails Financial helps people navigate investments, tax planning, and insurance. Imagine working with an advisor who isn't tied to specific brands. Mission Trails Financial has a fiduciary responsibility to act in the best interests of their clients by providing independent, objective advice. Their mission is to help clients accomplish their financial goals. As Joe Vitale once said, a goal should scare you a little and excite you a lot. Do yourself a favor and set up a time to chat with Mission Trails Financial. Visit www.missiontrailsfinancial.com or call 619-419-0238 to schedule a call. You'll be glad you did. We believe that leaning on professionals is how we get ahead. Check out the program notes for more information. Welcome back to the break. And once again, thank you so much, Michelle, for being here. Yes. Um, but yeah. also thank you, everyone, for listening to this. Um, w once again, we're able to bring this this podcast on the road. And it's not just because we love doing this. It's also because well, we love doing this. So, <laughs> <laughs> But it, what helps us uh, what helps us is the, the community that brings us along. Mm -hmm. You respond to our Instagram messages and all that stuff. And the community really pushes us forward. So to make this community grow more, hit that like. Subscribe. It does help uh, us grow this community more and more. Mm -hmm. Subscribe on YouTube if you're not watching. If you're not l watching this, stop your car now. And just <laughs> once again, pull up your YouTube app. The police will understand. Just hit subscribe. <laughs> just like, Sir, I, I'm, I'm subscribed to Chaotic Harmony. They'll understand. They'll understand. So just hit that subscribe <laughs> and leave us a review. Five stars only. Just like dot, dot, dot loading screen as I pull it up on this moment. I should have been more prepared, but this is a wonderful loading screen. All right, there we go. Uh, just like Mr. Boga. Thank you, Mr. Boga. Hi, Mr. Boga. Hey, so he says, Crystal and John John, hey, hey, yeah, yeah, are a light in our sometimes dark place in education. Ooh, thank you. Mm. This podcast is a place where you can feel as though you're set, sitting with friends, venting about the stressors we all deal with in our classrooms daily. Thank you for your bravery and thoughtfulness. Thoughtfulness. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for helping me not feel alone. Well, Aww. thanks, Mr. Boga. And please make sure that you uh, yeah, just, uh, um, leave us a review on any of your podcast listening apps. And if you have any questions, you're always welcome to email us at chaoticharmonyclassroom at gmail.com. And now it's time for Spiccato. So we have Michelle's book. Yay. And what's exciting about this Spiccato is. is that you will have the opportunity to have a copy of this book for your music classroom mm -hmm. as well, because we are going to be doing a giveaway. So watch the social media. Indeed. We'll be giving one away on Instagram when this episode airs. Oh, nice. Yeah. So and if you don't have Instagram, it's easy to make one. I've talked about how I used the bubble lesson in my music class, but mm -hmm. so you can go back and you can listen to that episode previously. Mm -hmm. We tagged Michelle in it. It'll um, be in the program notes which episode. It will. It will. Um and uh and I can add to it. We did um we, we did an extension activity where we did bubble conductors. So um, we went outside and I gave, um, the, I put the kids in groups and they had some sort of percussion instrument. Some of them had a jingle bell. Some of them had a triangle or a drum. And then we blew bubbles and there was a person who blew bubbles and a person who popped the bubbles. <laughs> and when the person popped the bubbles, everyone with a percussion instrument had to hit it. <laughs> so oh. it, was a, it was a watching and listening activity. Oh, nice. It was very fun. Yeah. That's so awesome. So that's my idea. <laughs> well, um, you came prepared okay i did <laughs> is it my turn yeah. now? it is your turn <laughs> oh, yes. you're holding the book so um, it's your turn <laughs> oh i see i see yeah um i think how i kind of envision using it with you know is that parents in the home using mm -hmm. it with their children mm -hmm. not necessarily um just me in a therapy room with you know a client mm -hmm. um because i i think that this is something, you know, after every few pages, you can even say like, oh, what do you think about that? Ooh, mm -hmm. how do you feel in your body if you were to say that? Mm 
right? Yeah. Um, and, and then you mentioned, uh, Crystal, you mentioned the, you know, one part where they're at a party, right? Yeah. Maybe parents can, you know, take a pause, for example, at that time to say, oh, how do you feel when we are at a party and I tell you to hug, you know, uncle so-and-so and auntie so-and-so and, you yeah. know, um, and, and really kind of listen in and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, maybe come up with like, oh, this is something you can signal. Like, you know, like mm-hmm. touch your nose, you know, if you're like, help me out. Oh, I <laughs> right? like that. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of how I imagined it would be mostly used with okay. parents and, and children. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, all the good ones are taken. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, the first thing I think about, about like the bubble personal space mm-hmm. is like just using a personal space activity and kind of correlating with this. So mm-hmm. oftentimes might do, um, excuse me, um, kids painting their own bubble. Painting their own yeah, bubble? Yeah, imaginary paint. Imaginary paint, oh, paint in front okay. of you, paint above you, paint below you. Ooh. That way there's like... Let's do can... it right now. So, so take your hand, uh-huh. dip it in the color of your choice. Right. Mine's purple. Mine's okay. orange. Awesome. Yes. And then what color is yours, Michelle? Purple also. Awesome. <laughs> yes. And then paint the front of your mm-hmm. bubble. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the sides. Ooh, I like this. Mm-hmm. And then up yeah. high, you can kind of feel the energy field. That's very nice. And then the music playing, they are moving around. If they bump into someone else, then ah. they have to take a seat. Oh. Yeah, I don't want any orange on my purple bubble. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fancy <laughs> um yeah so then also like if you want it. to do more Levon stuff you could also just play some float and stuff but float mm-hmm. yes so but yeah that, like that, that personal bubble correlating with my invisible bubble make i guess you're making it more visible with paint but it's still invisible i like yeah. it yeah. beautiful yeah. okay we do have a round of the week we do round of the week <laughs> okay, so um, this is the cup song, like that one yep. that you all know and love and have heard your children uh, sing ad nauseum, but it's really fun. Um, so we're going to put them upside down. So this is how it was taught to me, um, and I made some minor modifications. So I had to go clap, clap, conga, drum, try it. Clap, 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 clap conga, clap, drum. Um, then we go pick it up, pick, pick it, it up. up, good, move that cup move that cup good and don't mess no mess hand on the ground up like that and then when you pass it it's a passing game so clap clap conga drum pick it up move that cup and don't mess up Okay. Oh. Or I say don't give up. Which I way? was taught mess up, but don't give up. What? Which way are we passing? So I have the kids pass to the right. To the right. So okay. you put yeah, your yeah. right mm-hmm. hand down, oh. and then you cross your left hand over, and you release the cup in front of the person to your right. Oh. Yeah. There are a million videos on YouTube for how to do this, so I'm not going to spend too long teaching <laughs> no, it. No. But <laughs> the goal is to work up to the speed. And it took me a while to do that. And I've been doing it for a while. my 10th grade feels right now. (laughs) I know. This is church camp for me. Uh, (laughs) Okay. So that's the cup game. And now we can do the cup song. I'm not. Okay. okay. Yeah. You got to help me do the round part. Okay. We're not going to do the. Okay. okay, Cool. We won't do it at the same time. I just wanted to teach the. Sure. Sure. Yeah. The little Mm -hmm. um, words to it so that you guys can take that and use that in your music room. So I got my ticket Mm -hmm. for a long way way round. Two bottles of Pepsi for the way. And I sure would like some sweet company. And I'm leaving tomorrow. What do you say? When I'm gone, oh, when, when I'm, I'm gone, gone. You're, you're gonna, gonna miss me when I'm, I'm gone. gone. You're gonna miss, miss me by my hair. hair. You're, you're gonna miss me everywhere. Oh, you're, you're gonna, gonna miss me when I'm gone. gone. We'll miss Jonathan's hair. It's already been missed. You already miss it. No. <laughs> Kids look at old pictures like, wait, you had hair? Yeah. <laughs> he looked different. <laughs> yep. Shave, shave sooner. <laughs> Baby John John. Okay, so shall we try it again? Could we do uh, Echo? Yep. Cool. All right. I got my ticket for the long way round. I've got my ticket for the long way round. Two bottles of Pepsi for the way. 
two bottles of Pepsi for the way. And I sure would like some sweet company. And I sure would like some sweet company. And I'm leaving tomorrow, what do you say? And I'm leaving tomorrow, what do you say? You know the rest, yeah? Yes. All right. Let's do it Ready? Together. Here we go. I got my ticket for the long way round Two bottles of Pepsi for the way And I sure would like some sweet company And I'm leaving tomorrow, what do you say? When I'm gone, when I'm gone You're gonna miss me when I'm gone You're gonna miss me by my hair You're gonna miss me everywhere, oh You're gonna miss me when I'm gone I got my ticket for the long way round. Two I've balls of Pepsi for the way. And I sure Two balls would of Pepsi like for some sweet company. And, and I'm leaving tomorrow, what do you say? So when I'm, I'm gone, tomorrow, when, I'm gone. when I'm gone. Gonna miss me when, when I'm, I'm gone. gone. Miss me gonna by my miss hair, me when I'm gonna miss me everywhere. You're gonna oh, miss me you're gonna by my hair. You're gonna I'm miss gone. me everywhere. You're, you're gonna, gonna miss me when I'm gone. Hey. That Mich- was such a treat. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. This is really fun if you get fun. it going in music class and you yeah. get the kids singing along. Mm-hmm. But I've never tried it in around with kids, so I'm excited to give it a shot. All right. Yeah. Let us know how that goes. I will. And you should also try it, it out. It's going to crash and burn. <laughs> That's how it's going to go, but we're going to try. First time, maybe. First It'll be time. delightful. Cool. Once again, Michelle, thank yeah. you so much for having us. Yes, thank um, you. Thank is, you for inviting me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> inviting to your... Well, yeah. inviting me inviting to be a part of your apart. podcast. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, if people wanted to contact you mm-hmm. or if there's something you want to plug... Which is there something you want to share? Um, or? I guess if they want to find me on Instagram, uh-huh. mm-hmm. I uh, it's at Michelle Chan LMFT. Um, that's also my uh, website. <laughs> so Michelle Chan LMFT dot com. Can so, they buy your book directly on your website? They can't, but okay. they can buy it. Uh, they can request it through bookstores. Okay, if they prefer to shop through individual, like independent mm-hmm. bookstores, yeah. which is nice, uh, or they can purchase it from Amazon. From Amazon, awesome. I found you on Amazon. I'm just always trying to make sure that you get as much of the <laughs> proceeds yeah. as we can yeah. get you. Yes. Also, do yes. you? I'm, I'm, I didn't ask this in the interview, but do you have any curiosity to write more books? Not at this time, okay. but. Okay. I uh, I'm keeping it open. Okay. okay. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Right. Depending on, on what kind of sparks my interest. Sure. Yes. Awesome. And Crystal, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at Finny Vapa, and you can find me on Instagram at Mrs. Pridmore, and you can find me at crystalpridmore.com. And you can find me on all the socials at Mr. Seligman, M R S E L I G M A N on the Twitters. These you no, not YouTube. What I'm talking about. Actually, no, though. No, yes, YouTube. You I just haven't posted yep. anything in a while. On the Instas, and you can find us at CH Classroom on all the socials except for YouTube. You know the drill. It's at uh, it's youtube.com slash chaotic harmony classroom. That's the same thing as our Gmail, which I would love you to write us at chaotic harmony classroom at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> The Chaotic Harmony Podcast is a joint project between Crystal Pridmore and Jonathan Seligman. You can find us online at chaoticharmonyclassroom.com. You can email us at chaoticharmonyclassroom at gmail and let us know what you think. Give us feedback about what you would like to hear in future episodes. We're on all the socials. Find us on facebook.com slash chaoticharmonyclassroom. You can find us on Twitter at chclassroom, Instagram at chaoticharmonyclassroom, and you can even find our episodes on YouTube. Chaotic Harmony is the name of our channel. Special thanks to Brian Pridmore for his help with production and equipment. www.pridmoria.com We were we were packing up the car and driving here, and Jonathan's pointing to the raindrops. He's like, "What What's are that? what are that? those?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh-huh. It's become foreign. I'm gonna line the parts again. So, well, I just killed the mood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not sponsored by HBO. We can't do this. Oh, uh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that sounds good. Really? No, okay. no, no, no. I was being facetious. I was ready. I was trying to take you seriously. Mm, that's the problem.